uh, juxtaposition session here at the Berlin University of the Arts, focusing on yeah, new perspectives on contemporary cultural production. And today we have Satoshi Fujiwara with us, and I'm very excited about your presence. Satoshi is um, a Kobe-born and Berlin-based photographer, and has a very beautiful like uh, intertextual uh, reference within the series of lectures, because last semester Schumann Bazaar gave a talk. He's an editor, a curator, a writer. Did any one of you here uh, see the talk by Schumann Bazaar? One person. Um, so it's no, two, I see, <laughs> okay, make it three, <laughs> make it four. So um, anyway, so Schumann, a, a wonderful talk. I can recommend to kind of rewatch it on juxtaposition.net. And during this talk, um, he showed an exhibition. And in this exhibition were works of Satoshi. And while he was giving the talk, standing literally right here, he said, actually, you should invite Satoshi. I think he would be great for the juxtaposition lecture. So I did. And here we are. So um, yeah, Satoshi is, uh, yeah, well, you're a photographer, but also an artist. Um, you have a very radical approach to photography and a very uh, transdisciplinary, what I personally uh, I'm very, very um, intrigued by is your um, uh, almost hard cut collage approach to photography. So the, the, the amount of images that are confronted. Also the almost the grainy details of it. You really zoom close to the point where it gets almost uncomfortable. And then the way um, Satoshi uses photography as an artistic practice, but literally as a medium of sculpting as well. So photography here becomes a sculpture or an installation, it, it has a tectonic quality to it. There's a tactile experience um, with your works. And so I'm, I'm very thrilled to have you here with us. You've shown in many um, uh, institutions around the world, um, but um, I'm thrilled to have you here at the UDK and share your approach or kind of your upbringing in photography with us tonight. Before you come and before you can applause, I will already open for you the presentation. And now, a warm welcome to Satoshi Fujiwara, please. Um, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, my name is Satoshi Fujiwara, very best uh, photographer and artist. Um, I'm originally from Kobe, Japan, and the west side of Japan next to Osaka, and uh, since 2012 I have been uh, living here and working here in Berlin. Um, I initially actually studied graphic design and, um, and worked for design office in Tokyo, but um, shortly after I realized that uh, it's not my, the profession for me, and also my interest gradually shifted into more fundamental things, such as um, interpretation of image or its manipulation, or basically how to read an image and how to define this image. And uh, one day I decided to uh, quit my job and um, dedicate myself uh, uh, into my self-study in the library and um, I started to re uh, read uh, various books. And my aim was to grasp kind of um, uh, context of uh, contemporary image production. And the uh, very uh, beginning of the uh, exploration, I, I encountered uh, a book uh, which changed my vision. And the book called Empire of Science um, by Roland Barthes, a French author. And basically it's an, um, an essay on Japan. But um, in this book he analyzed and um, uh, observed the detail of uh, Japan and its culture. Um, kind of uh, based on his um, 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 a kind of um, his uh, based on his theory of um, 
um, linguistics, and uh, but I read it as a, as a comedy, actually. I couldn't stop laughing in the library, uh, as I had never seen my country in such a, such a manner. And uh, uh, kind of this book opened um, a new door to see the world differently. And also early films by Michael Haneke. And at the point I was also uh, immersed uh, watching a lot of movies. But I watched, when I watched his film for the first time, I was quite shocked, um, and uh, I couldn't stop uh, thinking about this um, in the movies. And uh, I started to watch many times and uh, analyze and, uh, and two things uh, I found uh, stuck me the most. Um, first thing is um, the casting in the films is insanely well done, so that uh, characters in the films uh, play uh, so natural and uh, realistic, uh, even more than um, documentary films or news footage. And the second point is that um, um, his films always comment on film media itself, and uh, in, in, in critical manner, and often play with uh, and uh, even betray the expectation of the, of the audience. Um, I was uh, inspired and, and uh, running a lot of things, uh, but um, I kind of um, two things um, encouraged my self-study. And uh, after a year of uh, a kind of intense self-study, I decided to move to Europe, as I was always fascinated by um, European imagery and its um, theory. And um, also, I was, at a point, inspired by uh, German uh, contemporary uh, conceptual photographers, such as um, Thomas Ruf or Thomas Demand, double Demand. And, uh, also, actually, a big factor is uh, my budget. I decided therein to start a new life and new um, uh, career from the scratch. Um, but um, after I relocated to Berlin, I just continued my self-study in the library while I was um, washing dishes in the, in the restaurant. But I slowly started to um, uh, develop my own uh, practice. And this is my first um, series of work. Um, I created as an um, um, homage to Michael Haneke. And one of the films of the same title, um, there's a scene that um, one protagonist takes picture of the uh, people in the train secretly in the Paris metro. I, I was kind of uh, um, inspired by the scene, and uh, I also just uh, attempted to take a picture of the people in the Berlin train in S-Bahn and U-Bahn. But of course, in real society, you are not allowed to take a picture without permission or even publish it. So I got interest to seek the kind of a boundary of one's recognition of the likeness or a boundary of uh, privacy right or portrait right. And I also started to manipulate the code of the people's face or like bodies, such as altering uh, uh, part of the body or uh, distorting or uh, changing the color of the skin or hair or uh, clothing and so on. And, and also tightly crop the images and the portrait to limit its code. Uh, basically, my aim was to obscure the uh, um, kind of identity of the person uh, or a subject in the picture. And it, 
it took several months to complete as a series, as I was constantly riding in the train and take a picture secretly and uh, also back to the studio and edit and so on. I, I kind of continued this kind of process. And um, I also created kind of um, uh, a book featuring this series. And I wanted to play kind of um, um, traditional method of photo book making. And uh, I decided to print uh, those series in a various uh, format and materials and to test uh, perception of the viewer, how uh, people perceive the same person or same image differently in relation with the, this, uh, this juxtaposition or the, this uh, format and medias. And uh, I got a prize for this series and uh, was uh, luckily uh, nominated for several prizes. So I got uh, kind of my first recognition. And uh, I had the occasion to collaborate with um, a fashion brand, SMRK, and the uh, portraits were featured in the closings and bags um, uh, for 2015 men's collection and presented in uh, Paris uh, Fashion Week. And in Berlin, in collaboration with um, Deutsche Oper, like uh, um, the Opera House, um, and the uh, portrait were displayed um, in the street uh, to celebrate the new season of the opera. Um, for me, what's interesting to see is, um, and uh, got, I was inspired, the a kind of uh, portrait had been gaining a different meaning constantly um, in relation with the place and uh, its medias. And on the left is uh, my first exhibition, first exhibition, um, uh, as a part of the collaboration with uh, Issemiyake. And um, as a photographer, uh, from the beginning, I was uh, curious about uh, the possibility of uh, kind of um, physical presence of uh, digital photography or di um, data. So I produced for this occasion like two meter wide and uh, 30 meter long. It's a huge photographic sculpture, um, photographic print made out of repetition of same images and printed on PVC on the both side. And uh, through this um, test and um, installation, I realized this um, material allowed to merge the um, image and as a physical presence by draping and uh, uh, crumpling on the, on the floor and so on. And after the exhibition, it was shipped to Barcelona to uh, install in uh, gallery space. I played uh, kind of uh, uh, same uh, of photography prints within uh, white cube space for the first time. And uh, after a few months, it was shipped to London for uh, uh, Photo London um, Photography Fair. And for this, uh, that occasion, I uh, cut the prints to divide in three pieces to install three different individual photographic sculpture. And um, I was also uh, interested in um, image manipulation in political context. So 2013, Reuters reported an, an um, scandal in, in um, Greek. So Greek police uh, photoshopped away the bruise on the suspect's face from the mugshot. And uh, it was uh, kind of 
it's more like uh, internet news, uh, of which I rant after a few years. But uh, um, I found it interesting. It's it's kind of suggests kind of um, there can be a kind of uh, hidden propaganda in the uh, uh, contemporary world. So uh, um, I decided to create something uh, based on this case and also uh, reversing this impact of the narrative. I created a uh, bruise on the people's face, so it's a completely fake image, and, and added on the uh, portrait from the, uh, my past code and series. And uh, j um, combined together with um, close-ups of police images, and uh, which I have taken various occasions. And uh, through um, a kind of uh, manipulation, I created a kind of fictional narrative, a kind of a reverse narrative, to test our uh, perception of um, you know, um, um, daily image uh, consumption, and also seek the kind of um, our a sense of distance between uh, uh, state and citizens. And I installed one of the image in the, in the public space in Tokyo um, uh, by repetition of same image. And I created a kind of a wall of the police as a, a iconography of state power. I was wondering, uh, the, I was curious about the people's reaction. But despite my expectation, there was no evidence of vandalism. Um, after, uh, back then, after living a few years in Berlin, I, uh, I was seeing a lot of graffiti on the street. I, uh, I was quite surprised. And uh, if the uh, place was different, the uh, result uh, must be different. And this is a, a companion series of police brutality which I created as a response to 2015 uh, European migrant crisis. At that point, um, um, news media were reporting daily um, this huge um, ongoing series uh, um, issue in, the, in Europe with kind of uh, emotional, like, shocking images. Oh. And uh, I wanted to um, uh, create something on it. As a first glance, um, you, you might perceive those kind of uh, images as a documentation of a brutal scene or kind of a crush between um, police and the citizens and so on. But in fact, all those images were taken in a very calm, uh, neutral moment. And there was no uh, brutal scene or, uh, um, when uh, the photo was taken. And by uh, manipulation, I created each image as an icon of violence. And by an uh, association of the images of sourceless, um, decontextualized images, so always uh, I'm trying to detach from uh, original sources and to create a kind of fictional narrative as a, in a way, parody of a reported reality. And I installed uh, this um, series in a gallery space and uh, my interest continues to seek the possibility of a new um, form of um, photographic installation. And uh, after the exhibition, I brought this huge print in a, uh, in a forest in a Berlin suburb to, to re-photograph it. So I, I was, uh, continued uh, to, uh, like, um, to test and uh, experiment how if the new narrative would come out of uh, its form. In 2015, there was uh, many uh, uh, things happened uh, uh, in Europe. When the um, Paris um, November terrorist attacks happened, 
I was um, happened to be there. Uh, one of the uh, shooting was uh, happened right uh, next block uh, from where I was having dinner. And this this is a um, um, a front page of the newspaper in the following days. And uh, the next, next day, I was wondering to visit one of the scenes uh, where uh, 13 people were killed. And um, um, I arrived with my camera, but I didn't want to report this incident itself. And, but to depict how this incident was treated in the media. And also for me, it was interesting to see the kind of um, background of news footage that has been uh, generated. So I started to focus on um, uh, the news crews there, a journalist and the cameraman and so on, to create kind of a report on the report and I started to focus more detail of one kind of quality of video cameras used by a journalist more in a deductive way. And those kind of uh, early series were exhibited my first institutional exhibition in 2017 at the Fondazione Prada Osservatorio in Milan in collaboration with um, an Italian architect and uh, curator, writer, um, Luigi Alberto Cipini. It's a really inspiring guy. And, it, and his uh, architecture office, uh, Amateur Global, we created a kind of world-scale photographic survey as an overview of uh, my early practice. And we took a reference from the specific um, um, exhibition in, in this history. And in 1942, in the mid of uh, World War II, there was an innovative photography exhibition at MoMA in terms of um, exhibition design or image display. The exhibition called Road to Victory um, and curated by Edward Steichen, and uh, exhibition design was made by Herbert Bayer. And um, the exhibition purpose is basically um, to motivate or encourage US, uh, US uh, citizens for the war. Uh, it, 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 it was opened uh, shortly after Pearl Harbor attacks. And uh, exhibition was uh, uh, very successful as a propaganda and uh, by uh, like um, uh, Herbert Bayer uh, created a world scale setting and uh, uh, showing uh, photographic images uh, showing uh, uh, with narrative like a storytelling way and uh, <coughs> the visitor were uh, easily immersed into the um, um, uh, message uh, created by the organizers. So basically, this exhibition was um, um, commissioned by uh, US Navy. And while our exhibition was um, uh, created a uh, non-linear, anti-narrative anti -narrative way of image display, so visitors couldn't see the to read the image uh, with, uh, like, with narrative. So each photograph uh, it's, was kind of suspended as a low status of propaganda. And uh, Amateur Global uh, suggested to uh, took a reference from Datsibao. It's a, a big character uh, propaganda poster in China. Um, in the 60s, uh, it, it became popular in the 60s during the um, Cultural Revolution. And uh, various uh, photos uh, from uh, different series were um, deconstructed and uh, dissociated to, to map into um, different uh, world scale um, um, survey in kind of post-industrial um, environment. 
And uh, after the exhibition, my interest in uh, propaganda images or political images uh, continued. And 2017, um, more than 800 um, neo-Nazis uh, gathered in Berlin Spandau to commemorate um, kind of uh, 30th uh, anniversary of death of uh, Rudolf Hess, like uh, once um, deputy to the Hitler. And I visited this uh, event to take a photo and uh, also um, um, I wanted to see it in, 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 in inside, outside. And uh, a participant were carrying a kind of um, um, em emblem of neo-Nazi or kind of um, uh, uh, red, uh, white, black uh, flags and uh, uh, Deutsche Reich, um, uh, German Empire flags as a, uh, as a symbol. And uh, by pretending kind of naive um, Asian tourist, I uh, get closer to the subject and take a picture and document it, uh, kind of, um, made a close-up images. And uh, after uh, uh, for a while, um, and I uh, started to work on these images. And w what I have done was um, to uh, eliminate kind of uh, um, uh, symbolic uh, of uh, 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 neo-Nazi neo -Nazi symbolism, such as uh, uh, erasing uh, the emblems or like uh, literally breaching the color of the flags and so on. So my aim was to emasculate a uh, kind of uh, power of um, neo-Nazi uh, symbolism. And uh, as a result, the photograph uh, became kind of skeleton of uh, far-right um, 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 participant of uh, uh, far-right uh, politics uh, demonstration. And uh, this is a mock-up for uh, my um, possible uh, uh, future ex uh, installation. Um, I do believe this is one of the best places uh, uh, for uh, this series to exhibit it in, in its um, uh, public space. And ideally, a kind of um, um, large-scale uh, 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 poster of uh, usually used for um, election um, um, posters. Uh, kind of uh, my idea is install uh, those kind of images um, as a, a brown canvas or a white canvas to provoke a boundaries. And uh, this is a Bina series. Um, um, an account of voyeurism. Um, voyeuristic gaze is also uh, important uh, for me and when I consider about the nature of photography. So I visited um, uh, Venus uh, erotic fair in Berlin in Messe and to take a photo. And uh, instead of um, explicit kind of um, models of the shows, I focused um, in the audience, it's, it's kind of pale, um, you know, um, blue excitement of the audience and its, it's uh, record devices. And uh, after a few years, I had the occasion to collaborate with um, uh, Balenciaga. And uh, for that occasion, I suggested to create kind of a similar setting in, in the studio based on uh, Venus series to create kind of um, uh, campaign images. Uh, and then COVID came and, and in the middle of uh, first lockdown in Germany, I was asked by the curators to to create something together with um, Alexander Kruge, 
at the point 88 years old, like a uh, German uh, literary author and uh, filmmaker and intellectual. And uh, at some point, obviously, we had to work remotely. So we decided to employ a kind of um, ancient um, letter communication like way. So like uh, one inscribed um, message on a stone or a clay tablet and then uh, sent to it and the second person received and got the message and uh, erased and uh, overwriting it and sent back and so on. But in in contemporary way, which is um, online exchange. So um, Alexander Kruger started to provide a lot of interesting materials, uh, mostly related to uh, politics and uh, and and uh, uh, history and news images and so on. He created um, caref carefully selected and curated and uh, kind of um, provide provided in kind of uh, triptych uh, uh, footage. And I started to uh, project uh, these materials on the screen of the, my laptop to deconstruct it. And from various uh, direction and also kind of um, uh, many times repeatedly um, to uh, create overdose footage and then uh, send back to uh, Kruger and he uh, provided new material and so on, and we had a kind of exchange of visual language. And uh, as a result, we presented a four minutes um, a visual essay on our uh, recent political traumas and uh, without any specific play or uh, uh, ideologies. Uh, it's a little bit content warning, and it's a, a little bit uh, flashy, so um, if you, uh, someone has a problem, let's uh, close your eyes. And, um, okay. So, a uh, post -X series uh, in which I use a little bit different palette. Um, I have been working also in, in commission uh, projects, particularly in fashion industry. Uh, in this series, I 
um, attempt to rework on my past project. And by repossessing uh, kind of uh, my pr procedure of the past commissioned project, this uh, uh, particular series um, demonstrates kind of ability to possess kind of artistic integrity within a commercial assignment. So actually, uh, and this is a um, campaign image I created for uh, Salomon and GR Tenke. And uh, kind of uh, I uh, uh, tracked back the um, pr process of my uh, image making and translated in different language. And this is also a kind of tracking back way of image making. Um, uh, in this series, uh, uh, this series calls uh, traceability in the extended matrix. In the series, I attempted to uh, kind of uh, explore the inside out uh, landscape of contemporary image production. Um, the images are uh, comprised um, various uh, digitalized materials from my uh, data, um, uh, basically, uh, uh, Dropbox. And uh, not only the uh, work-related uh, materials such as mock-ups or drawings or citation and so on, but also my very personal material or uh, pri private photo and uh, private uh, document and so on. So in a way, it can be considered as a, port a self-portrait of myself or like autobiography of myself made out of uh, my data. And next year, uh, I will be staying in, in Wuhan in China uh, as a part of a um, um, residency program. I will dedicate to uh, create um, a new portrait and uh, autobiography of, of the citizens, uh, basically um, the uh, local people I will encounter. And by not taking photograph of uh, them, uh, themselves, but uh, to ask the people to provide me uh, kind of uh, personal materials or uh, possibility I visit uh, their place to get the permission to digitalize these um, customer uh, materials. And then I will uh, map onto new atlas. So um, uh, basically, I'm a photographer, but I'm not interested in um, creating kind of beautiful images, but more like um, uh, questioning uh, and also uh, attempt to redefine uh, not only photography itself, but um, a photographer as a, a pro um, profession. And uh, also for me, it's interesting to constantly develop new language. And um, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Satoshi. That was uh, two de force, beautiful work. Um, uh, I knew only half of it, and um, it fits very well into the overall trajectory of this course of like juxtaposition, <laughs> obviously, because this, this is uh, an oeuvre made of, uh, built on juxtapositions, uh, and kind of at any given moment. Um, so this is time for questions. You can get ready for your questions, but maybe I start with your kind of almost first slide, because um, it kind of. Uh, was the common denominator for the entire talk. That was you reading Roland Barthes for the first time. Yep. Um, by the way, if you haven't come across Roland Barthes, please check it out. It's, it's uh, worth, uh, worth a reading. And what I saw there, and what you mentioned, is that you kind of saw a, a kind of quote-unquote Western view on Japanese culture, and it seemed almost ridiculous to you. But it was, in a way, about decontextualizing and recontextualizing. Yeah, you yeah. Know, seeing your own... Uh, where you grow up from a different perspective. 
and um, also how you explained like really studying the Haneke movies of trying to understand what's the context where they appear. That seems almost like the red, like the common denominator, the lining throughout all your work. There's always a contextualizing, decontextualizing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, can, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because it's beautiful how it really draws from the very first inspiration to, to, to the latest work. Um, like a directory connection with um, Yeah, but the, the way you kind of, what I've, I find super inspiring that you, you, you always seem to decontextualize the situation. Let's say you were in Paris, you witnessed um, the hor horrible um, attacks there, but you focused on something different. You focused actually on the people taking the picture. So mm. the scene itself was decontextualized. The pictures you showed from the police, by zooming in so deeply or kind of also changing, altering the images, you, as a, a viewer, you never fully know what you're looking at and you play with the perception of the viewer. Yeah. Um, um, basically, at the, in a way, uh, on one level, I'm also a um, street photographer and um, daily, like, um, uh, just going out and take picture and visit, like, uh, when I see the kind of uh, news, I just visit um, the place and just accumulating it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I never publish as a straight um, what photographs, but always um, uh, detaching from the um, original sources, and um, occasionally create kind of uh, uh, as a series of work or like uh, uh, can be used as a part of the uh, uh, installation and so on. S and I don't know. It's it's not. The <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe also my question was too complex. But I like that you you're not really showing what you're showing. Or in a way, or you show, so you, there's always a play. As a, I don't know how you felt, but then as a as a viewer, a spectator, you there's a lot of puzzling out that you still have to do, which I think is the power when I look at your work. It's it's n it's it's not um, it's not formulated out, so to speak. It leaves a lot to the spectator to to mm. finish up the work. Yeah, but that's how I experience it. Mm. But maybe on another note, so not so <laughs> starting not so complex, I liked also your expression of self-study. You kind of watched the Haneke movies many times, or then you said you came to Berlin, you worked in a restaurant, understood, washing yeah. dishes, but you continued your self-study. Can you, and you guys, in a way, you're in the university, but it's actually a self-study. It's up to you what you make out of it. No, it's not really up to, to us here. So can you elaborate on your practice of self-study? Um. Just um, um, just I'm I was um, going to uh, library every day and uh, <laughs> um, um, uh, reading books next to another uh, what what I found and uh, uh, most of most of things I forgot. So <laughs> And what, what are your favorite ones, so to speak? I mean, we know Roland Barthes, I love that. Yeah. And I was thinking when you, s for me, I had another moment. So again, Roland Barthes, this is Reich der Zeichen, Empire of Science, uh, as you said in English. It's this I incredible kind of analysis or attempt of understanding Japanese culture. Mm. I had a, a vice versa situation. Um, as a student, I got really into Kurosawa, the Japanese filmmaker. And what I like with him that he picked up very traditional Western topics like Shakespeare, King Lear, or Dostoevsky, the, the idiot, but contextualize it within a Japanese traditional setting. Or think of the Seven Samurai, which then became like the blueprint for all Western movies. But I really, this, wa this was something that really inspired me to kind of take something out of a different context, tell the story, and see what it then does. Um, so this is to my first question, but then um, following up, like what, what, what other inspirations, like where do you draw your inspirations from? Is this other movie makers, filmmakers, is it literature, is it rather music? Um, like what's the source of your inspiration and your influences? Actually more like uh, actual um, news or mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know, um, um, actual incident or something, what I... Uh, witness in in the uh, uh, news or also um, observing how uh, news media is uh, providing uh, 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 
uh, carefully selected these images and so on. And uh, I uh, kind of uh, speculate kind of um, background of the um, outcome. But um, yeah, I yeah I was also inspired by a lot of um, uh, kind of early works of uh, uh, the uh, artists. Kind of, um, for instance, um, Andy Warhol. Uh, it's a um, works of Andy Warhol shortly before the his. Uh, Breakthrough, mm -hmm. and uh, also mm, it's an um, uh, illustration in a manuscript. The what? The, the uh, manuscript, yeah. like a codex and so on. But uh, I don't have a specific uh, like a, um, answer for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it reminds me also of the early works you mentioned, Thomas Demand, who also analyzes kind of news footage imagery and what they actually tell you know, behind the actual happening. Yeah. Um, this is maybe a moment for you guys to... Oh yeah, and actually my colleague just told me if you want to be heard, there's a microphone, I can also pass it to you. If you want to be recorded. If you want to be recorded while you ask a question, otherwise, um, first questions, yes. To yeah. just repeat for the online audience, um, basically about the, the, the system or the methodology of creating these in very dense, uh, crowded, crowded compositions, if there's a system or methodology yeah. behind that. Uh, actually, a very um, analog way of uh, digital uh, work. And uh, um, basically, one by one, I was uh, putting uh, next to another, juxtaposed next to another, but uh, inspired by like uh, um, um, AI generated images, but without using uh, AI generated uh, like a program and so on. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> the colors or the, uh, like, it looks really good, but I always ask uh, if, you, uh, if your uh, experience like working in design company helped to making this work, or do you have any other, uh, like, your special aesthetic? Uh, I can repeat this question just for the online audience always. Um, simply put, uh, kind of also similar direction, like it, what, is there a trick or approach on how you build these images that you said you don't want to make beautiful images, yet they're very perfectly composed, so to speak. You know, they, they, they're very powerful images. So did your background uh, in design and working design agency in any way influence your handling of images or imagery? Um, uh, for me, it uh, was an um, interesting um, experience working in the uh, design industry as um, I, could, I was able to see the ki kind of background, how uh, kind of manipulate w uh, uh, people in the, in the image, as, um, particularly in advertising industry. And also, um, yeah, for me, it's important to embrace kind of um, um, heterogeneous um, definition of uh, image. So, um, for me, it's um, important to demand kind of um, uh, kind of um, um, homogeneity of the same taste of uh, um, uh, photographic identity. Um hope I answer the question. Yep, please. Um I have questions. 
Yes. Do you want the mic or do you? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So okay. first question is, do you think there is a danger in um, presenting in a beautiful manner or setting? Like, put that, put like a certain thing which is maybe, um, because all your portraits are very aesthetically pleasing, but it's maybe things that are in general not so beautiful. Ah, okay, so... So uh, <laughs> if I understood right, the juxtaposition again, <laughs> to pick up <laughs> the term of the perfection of the imagery, uh, yet the, the content of the imagery that is often disturbing. Correct? Yeah, is it just dangerous to make everything beautiful? Uh, what is, the <laughs> is it <laughs> dangerous to make things beautiful is the question. It's interesting, um, be, but, but because you perceive it as beautiful, I would say it's rather disturbing. No, anyways, but let's 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 uh, let's stay stay with the question of um, it's a good one actually. If I take it from there, and you find your second question, the um, the perfection of the imagery, you know, that you are like a, your craftsmanship is superb, obviously, I think when looking at it, and then you play with however disturbing imagery, whether it's the police or whether it's the guys at the Venus or it's the neo Nazi. It's not you're not taking pictures of fields of beautiful flowers, no? But they're, they're highly politicized imagery that you somehow kind of, so that kind of contrast between uh, aesthetically perfect, quote unquote, imagery, but, uh, but also with disturbing content. Like, what's your, what's your take on that? That's the question I got out of your comment. Yeah. Mm. What's, what's, what's your thought or philosophy behind that? Um. Um, more like um, a kind of um, constantly uh, testing the uh, um, perception of the audience. And for instance, um, police image, I uh, posted on um, um, uh, social media uh, without uh, any uh, description and uh, to, to see how people uh, react and so on. And, uh, um, sorry. Uh. No, um, I mean, f fair enough here. I think the question is, I think you already described it very uh, eloquently in your talk, but you, you choose, deliberately choose hard topics. Yeah. Correct? Where does that come from? Let's start with that. Um, yeah, and to be honest, I don't know, but... Um, oh, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ma yeah. well, maybe you put some thought to this and let it rest. We had yeah. actually um, uh, a presentation last semester where also a question was asked and the speaker said, well, let me think about this for a moment, and towards the end he came back <laughs> to it. So in the back of your mind, on the back burner, think like, yeah. what, what, where does the, 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 the also Haneke, like, this is, this, is, this, is, this is not bedtime stories, this is rough stuff, so to speak, but where, where does this fascination come from? It would be intriguing mm. to find out. But you had a follow-up question. Um, yeah, and it may sound hard, but it's really just interesting. <laughs> Would you Sorry? print? Uh, would you print any photo on on fashion? Like every photo, or do you make like a cut? Well, how do you select what to print? You're referring to the Isimiyaki collaboration. Um, the uh, large photograph print. You mean? Uh, I think uh, the the ones that were printed on clothes. Ah, okay. How did um, you select? Um. Uh. Uh, uh, basically, uh, the project, but I, I left uh, like uh, I just uh, gave my image and uh, 
designer of the um, clothing like, uh, suggested some kind of um, design and and uh, selected the you mean how to crop this no more like the selection process process of collaboration like also that no but <laughs> more Sorry. like what what makes you choose an image to to you didn't decide you gave images and they put the images on yeah okay fair enough Jakob you had a question um, well, A quick summary, like basically in a, in, a, in a one sentence, how do you as a photographer see the world? Like what's, what's uh, intuition, what's real planning, like what's your tick, so to speak? Because most photographers have a certain tick, so to speak. They always see architecture or they see like what, what triggers, where does your ling, 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 your alarm bells go on, so to speak? Um. <laughs> Um, it's um, uh, difficult to answer because I'm um, uh, creating something like uh, just following my intuition and uh, afterwards I trying to articulate in word and um, trying to understand my words. So um, uh, for me it's um, kind of uh, naturally came out. And uh, yeah, on the occasion, um, I just um, uh, artic trying to articulate in words for now, but uh, maybe in 10 years, uh, I describe completely differently. So, yeah. <laughs> in the back row, there's another question. I repeat again, sorry, did you ever face legal issues or did anyone ever come up and said, hey, this is a picture of me? Uh, for now, uh, I never had, luckily. But, um, yeah, I often, um, I'm basically using kind of, um, um, uh, kind of uh, compact camera and uh, always kind of uh, playing as I described, uh, playing like an uh, Asian naive tourist. So um, for me, it's a um, kind of way to immerse into a, a, as a part of the background mm -hmm. and uh, uh, erase ima myself in a, in a, in a, um, a landscape. Um, yeah, luckily, I never heard for now. But this is nice. Can you elaborate a little bit on this technique of playing the Asian tourist? Like, because this, uh, this is an interesting methodology, so, so to ba speak. basically, uh, wearing a cap and a rucksack mm -hmm. and uh, hanging a small camera mm -hmm. and uh, slightly open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah, kind of. And that works. Uh, for now, yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> how, for example, this, this is really fascinating, but how did you. What made you, did you observe this as a tourist, or what made you even come up with? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, naturally came up, like, okay. but uh, yeah, I also like to observe people, so yeah. maybe I acc accumulated kind of yeah. um, data. <laughs> this, this is really beautiful. Uh, yes, uh, uh, question or question, so one, two, three, you start.
It's, it's a very long comment. No, but... So that's in a similar lane. Um, it, very simply speaking, it's again a question of form and content, which I also find very fascinating. That's what I said before, that, that, uh, that the, your content is of... Um, uh, your content is political situations, political context, uh, usually of the brutal sort, so to speak. No? And, but the, the, the presentation, so the medium that you choose, is, um, is of a hyper-realistic one. So where, and uh, she mentioned the exhibition of another photographer who has kind of a similar, very aesthetically, very uh, clear aesthetics in the imagery, but the content is, is rough. We had actually the same discussion with the last photographer, Mustafa Abdulaziz. There was the same. He did, did, a, lot, did a lot of like, documentary work um, in the Global South. Really rough content, but quote-unquote beautiful imagery. And it's funny that this is a question that I think photo photographers are constantly asked. You would never ask that to a painter or to a musician, but somehow to photographers you do, because it feels like it's more of a depiction of reality. But anyway, that, that friction again between form and content seems to be kind of a recurring interest here in the crowd. Like the, 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 the formal aesthetic choice, your language that you found, and the content of, of these images. What are your first, yeah. first thoughts on, on that? Um, but uh, um, for me, it's um, so basically, um, I'm accumulating um, thousands of uh, images, but uh, I only um, publish like. Uh, uh, less than one percent of images, and uh, I'm I, I'm kind of censoring um, the the really um, it's a kind of a prank um, in between. Like uh, only I don't publish kind of um, um, discussing um, imagery uh, aesthetics uh, as a discussing. Um, subject in dis uh, discussing uh, um, uh, aesthetics, always uh, pr uh, playing with uh, in between. And um, also um, uh, kind of a sense of uh, uh, humor is uh, important to uh, kind of not blocking uh, our uh, audience, but still like a, a, a kind of um, uh, sneaking in this um, kind of uh, different audience and so on. And uh, what was the question? <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the relation of form and content. But I think I would like to ask a question to the both of you, because it's interesting that this is tendentially only asked to photographers, as if it's a depiction of reality, even though this is just another brush like any other art, so to speak, that you choose. And I think we've seen here a very collage-like approach where photography really becomes but a medium. 
but a tool, but a brush. So you would never ask the painter, oh, can you really the, the Guernica, Picasso, is this really something you can paint here? So that, that's not a question that you would ask in any other kind of um, medium, just food for thought. But there were two more questions here and then one in the back. So uh, you too. Okay, so one, two, and back to you. Um, Mm -hmm. what's, what's the Wuhan project about? Um, um, basically, um, I will uh, kind of um, create a kind of um, s a series of work of uh, portrait and uh, um, autobiography series based on this uh, series. And uh, um, basically, uh, this series is a kind of uh, um, um, made out of um, uh, data, so obviously um, it would be um, a, a, a different uh, result come um, come out um, and in the in the each scheme of the um, uh, like um, regulation of uh, data usage and so on. So I'm, I'm very curious about um, the how the outcome would be in in China. And uh, yeah, it's the if I create something um, uh, s same series uh, create in in Japan, that uh, um, result would be uh, completely different. Mm -hmm. So I would like to experiment uh, uh, within this series. I, I like this imagery as an autobiography. <laughs> I think it's pre pretty dope. Uh, um, in the with a white cap. Yes. So mm. to repeat the question very simply, how do you collaborate <laughs> when other <laughs> when other people are kind of work also with your ideas? What's your um, what's your trick? Uh, it's of course um, uh, uh, depend on the project, but for instance, um, for uh, kind of uh, fashion shooting, for instance, um, uh, in the beginning always um, I ask. Um, the uh, kind of possibility of uh, kind of um, um, working in freedom, and uh, of course I'm, I'm um, uh, with the respect of uh, rec uh, their request and um, and uh, their uh, like um, scheme, but uh, um, if um, they are not allowed. And the uh, kind of uh, freedom in image creation, um, I, I cannot do that. So this um, my like um, um, kind of um, commission project. It's uh, kind of uh, a little bit limited, but uh, um, other. Uh, I, yeah. So you try to keep so complete yeah. freedom there. That's a good trick. Yeah. Um, maybe one last question, or wait, one, two more, you and you, and then, then this is the final question. Yeah.
How, how are you able to, um, with the portable camera, get this kind of sharpness of detail? Um, I, I often use like um, um, uh, no finder uh, photo uh, way of uh, taking photo, and also um, the my process of editing is kind of uh, like a um, little bit painting like way, and uh, I uh, uh, sometimes like uh, paint each hair or on on it or like. It's kind of um, often um, takes some time after shooting um, to uh, finalize uh, my image. Mm. Um, yeah, and also I'm uh, a kind of um, kind of demon of detail, so I I need to uh, create kind of uh, wrinkles and so on. And Did you say a demon of detail? Yeah, that's a nice one. <laughs> It's a really, I didn't know this expression. But that's what I try to say. This is, this is, photography is nothing but the first starting point when it becomes almost painting what we're looking at, you know? The way also you kind of work on these images. Yes? What um, emotions, reactions do you hope to evoke or provoke with your imagery also and the presentation of them? Um, uh, for instance, um, in the um, um, collaboration with um, um, Deutsche Oper Berlin, and this portrait was uh, displayed uh, like literally all over Berlin on the street in the, in the poster. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so there was a kind of a risk to, to be recognized. A risk to? To be uh, recognized. And yeah. uh, so uh, also uh, uh, on the, for the pro uh, project, we uh, uh, reworked this image to, to change more, it's the, um, to manipulate images, uh, the, the, um, to be not recognized and so on. It's um, occasionally uh, a little bit of fixing and uh, adjusting images. And what do you hope to evoke? Like, um, what do you what do you hope in the audience? What their reaction could be with when looking at your work? Like happiness or dis disturbance or shock or. Uh, um, uh, for me, it's like um, my goal is um, one uh, create something which can be considered in a multiple uh, different uh, interpretation, mm -hmm. not only like a, a funny image or a beautiful image or a disgusting image or so, all uh, together. Mm. Um, yeah. That's also, also how I would read it, that there's a, there's a criticality to it, that you, there's not one reading does it allow you, because you kind of, you're too distracting too much from the actual topic, but so the, the multi-layeredness um, in reading these images is, is how, how I perceive them as well. So maybe I come, first of all, great questions, really wonderful questions tonight. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and before we come to an end, my last question that I ask every speaker is there, uh, any um, advice, any recommendation that you could give us here, the audience, all these becoming students of whatever field they study? Um, what's a trick you can share and piece of advice for the future? Um, uh, sadly, it's a very, uh, maybe Japanese answer, but uh, <laughs> um, find um, what you want to work hard for and and work hard and uh, 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 non-stop. 
<laughs> it's, it's a very <laughs> that's 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 uh, amazing. Super yeah. way of yeah. description. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, thank you so much, Satoshi. Thanks Warm so applause. Much. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you all very much also to our online audience. Uh, wonderful questions. Have a great start into the week. And see you soon. Take care.